Hello and happy Tuesday, which is of course my book reviews day. And today I want to talk to you about Daphne, which is something you should not do if you are a character in the novel of Daphne. So this is Daphne by Josh Mallerman. It is his newest title, came out mid-2022. Uh, it's currently only available in a trade state. This is the trade from Del Rey. Unboxed it about a month ago, uh, courtesy of VJ Books. So I got a nice little signed copy. I believe there are still signed copies available on VJ Books as well as a lot of other bookseller sites, including Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, I think, have copies as well. <clears throat> but this trade edition, you can you could find anywhere books are sold. Uh, so this is Josh Ballerman's newest novel, and I have to say, I'm a little disappointed. It's not bad. It's not. It's not bad, but it, it's a little disappointing. Let, let's talk about it. Uh, first and foremost, the novel itself kind of reads like a young adult novel. I mean, there uh, kind of reads like it's a teen novel, which is fine. I mean, I'm I I read novels of all sorts, so I'm all for it. But I guess I was expecting more of uh, Josh Mallerman uh, horror. And, I mean, there are horror elements in Daphne here, but they're very toned down. Uh, we'll get to the murders and the, those murder scenes momentarily, but it's, it, it feels very toned down, apart from the murders being quite brutal for a young adult novel. The rest of the novel felt young adult, but that's fine. Uh, one other thing to know is there are no chapters in here. I saw some people online complain, on Goodreads complaining about that, but it really didn't bother me. There are page breaks. Well, that's a bad example because that's the very start of the novel. But there are little page breaks and section breaks that kind of break up the uh, chapters, if you will. So even though there aren't really chapters and it's all just one kind of giant text, there are breaks to, you know, split up the scenes, split the point of views, and so on. Uh, anyways... The main point of view, the main protagonist of Daphne is a teenager named Kit who uh, has just won, right at the start of the novel, the game-winning throw uh, in a the game-winning basket in the championship basketball game. Uh, but it soon revealed she's got a lot of worries on her mind. Uh, the night before the championship game, her and her teammates were sitting around telling ghost stories when one of them told the urban legend of the titular Daphne. Uh, she is a seven-foot, uh, vengeful, uh, the vengeful spirit of a seven-foot-tall woman, completely clad in denim and wearing Gene Simmons' kiss makeup on her face. More on that in a minute. And uh, she was wrongfully killed in this story, and now her ghost haunts and kills those who think about her. So the town collectively doesn't, you know, it's an urban legend. The town doesn't think about her. It's, there's no news on Daphne. And uh, when you do start thinking about Daphne, she will hunt you down and kill you. And pretty soon, uh, some of Kit's friends, some other teenagers on this basketball squad, uh, start winding up dead. And so Kit is worried that she's going to be next, and it's up to her to figure out uh, how to stop Daphne, to figure out what's going on, and so on. Uh, there's also another main protagonist uh, in the form of the detective that's on the case, which... Those stories, those chapters are all right. And then there are intermittent little chapters or segments from the point of views of other kids on the team, uh, which they're very short-lived because that's usually the character that's going to die next. That's when it flips point of views. Um, so anyways, yeah, it kind of feels like a young adult novel, which, like I said, take with a grain of salt. Uh, however, my biggest issue was the voice of Kit, the main character. So it, it reads like a young adult novel, but Kit doesn't read like a young adult. Um, a lot of the chapters are these journal entries, Kit Lamb's Jolly Journal, that she makes throughout, which are very like self-inflective uh, journal entries, mostly dealing with anxiety. But they don't read like a 17-year-old's journal entries. They read like Josh Mailerman's journal entries, and he just put Kit Lamb's name on it. I, it's, he doesn't do a convincing 17 year old. Like it's, it's far too mature for what the character is supposed to be. And there's not really a lot of character development to say, maybe that's just how she is. Maybe she's wise beyond her years, but that's not the impression that I get. I mean, I, there was a lot of self-inflection, uh, especially a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion and philosophical thoughts on anxiety in these chapters, but it just, I don't know. It, it didn't feel genuine for the character. 
and I, I know that's a it's a very personal subject, anxiety, when it comes to Josh Mallerman. Uh, one of the reoccurring themes with Kit Lamb in this novel is the story about when she had her first panic attack and she called 911 on herself, uh, which is a story that Josh Mallerman has adapted from his own life. Uh, he's been in interviews where he's talked about uh, a younger Josh Mallerman called 911 on himself when he had the mind altering thought of how he could do anything with his life. It's not like a constrictive anxiety, more of like, a, I guess, I, I kind of get like a fear of open spaces kind of vibe from it, where it's like he has all possibilities in his life, all roads, anything he wants to do, and he called 911 on himself. And that is a story that is hammered time and time again within Daphne through Kit's journals. And I, I guess that's also part of my issue is that it, it's, it's a very short novel. It's probably Josh Mallerman's shortest novel. I mean, it's a very small trim size, barely under, barely over 250 pages. Uh, I mean, not counting like House of the Bottom of the Lake, which is a novella. It's a very short novel, but it gets its length through repeating like these stories. Like Kit's, Kit's journals time and time again are about anxiety, which I... I can't say it speaks to me. I've never had an anxiety attack. I'm very thankful for it. And maybe it speaks to you if you're a reader who has had anxiety attacks. But I felt like it was beating a dead horse by the eighth or ninth journal entry talking about anxiety. Uh, similarly, basketball. Uh, Kit is a basketball player. Her and her friends are basketball players. But the number of times the basketball is discussed. It's like the main event here, other than the titular Daphne. It's like, move over, Daphne. We're talking about basketball again. Uh, I, I, I assume, I mean, I'm not a basketball player. I assume baller is the correct nomenclature for a basketball player. But if you were to take a shot every time the word baller is used in this novel, you will give yourself alcohol poisoning. So many references to ballers. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> But anyways, I feel like I'm, I'm getting harsh, kind of nitpicking on the journal entries, the use of ballers. I haven't even talked about Daphne. So I guess that's my, kind of a minor spoiler um, in that Daphne is real. Uh, Daphne is, in fact, a ghost going around killing people, so I apologize on that uh, for not really giving you a warning. But, <clears throat> I mean, Daphne's on the cover, and it's called Daphne, and people are turning up dead, so... I don't know, put one one together, you realize Daphne is going to be something. And Daphne, I think, is supposed to be this terrifying, I don't want to say monster, this terrifying ghost, but I feel like the descriptions he keeps giving Daphne continue to detract from any terror that you feel. I mean, sure, seven foot tall, woman clad in denim, why not? Gene Simmons kiss makeup? Okay, that's weird. Um, one of the descriptions of Daphne is riding a bike, a bike that is far too small for her in slow motion. And it's like, I I don't know. I, I guess you're going for terror, but it's not scary. It's, it's goofy. It's almost like Josh Malaman at every turn keeps trying to undercut his main antagonist. And sure, it's a ghost that haunts people when you think about her, and that's a crazy concept, because the more you think about her, the more she's going to come after you and hunt you. But that just makes you think about her more and more, which is, you know, a really bad Ouroboros kind of, you know, cycle to get into there. But uh, I, I don't know. I feel like every time he would describe Daphne, it was, it was silly. Uh, there are deaths in here, and they are described... Uh, and they do sound kind of brutal. A lot of people being kind of crumpled or destroyed like they're made out of like tin foil or uh, paper mache, which is a terrifying thought. That just sounds brutal. But it's very calm the way he describes it. Like it's it's not like blood and gore. It, it, it's very much as PG-13 as you could get with those descriptions, uh, which, like I said, if it's, if it's going to be like a young adult novel or something that's aimed at a younger audience or a teenage audience, all the power to you. Uh, it just, I don't know. It, it felt, it didn't feel like it was marketed that way, which made it a little more disappointing. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was an all right novel. It was an all right read. It just, I felt that, like I said, the, the teenage characters didn't really read like teenage characters 
the adults, I mean, the adults in any horror novel or any horror movie, for that matter, are going to make stupid decisions, especially so in here. That's that's just fine. Um, the cop, the detective, was beyond cartoonish. I mean, she is a, uh, she's a detective who is very determined to solve this case. Like, she'll do anything to solve these murders. But it's almost like, she makes the characters in, like, NCIS seem realistic. I mean, uh, Detective McGowan, at one point, and this is this is not really a spoiler because I'm not going to get into any specific details, but at one point, Detective McGowan goes to uh, a house that she has a suspect in, and she doesn't have a warrant. I mean, like, there's one thing of, like, breaking the door down. She literally takes her gun out and shoots the lock of the door. Like, in this, like, like I'm just thinking picture of this suburban neighborhood. I mean, it's a small town, uh, Sam Hatton, where it takes place. But, like, that just seems so goofy, so illogical. Like, you're shooting the lock off a door in a public neighborhood. Oh, my God. Uh, I do have another uh, another complaint, which I'm going to talk to in a second. But it does involve a little bit of spoiler territory, I suppose. Uh, so, at 11 minutes and 30 seconds... That's your spoiler warning. Minor spoilers in 10 seconds. Uh, while we're waiting for those 10 seconds, weird nitpick. Can we agree that the name Sam Hatton is a terrible name for a town? I mean, I like that he references Goblin, which is from the titular Goblin anthology that he wrote, which is kind of a neighboring town that to Sam Hatton, Michigan. But, like, I don't know. Sam Hatton, it just so clearly sounds like Manhattan, and you just changed a couple letters. It's like, uh, if he's going to set his next novel in, like, Dampa, Florida, or, like, Bluston, Texas, it's just, it sounds goofy. <laughs> Anyways, that's just a random nitpick. Some slight spoilers in five seconds. You've been warned, so now we're going into slight spoilers. Now, obviously, Daphne is a real character. She's a ghost. She's hunting people. The town, it's revealed that the town has sort of collectively forgotten her, which... I guess maybe that's a real thing. Like, you have group trauma that is so deep that everyone just forgets about her. Which, I guess, leads to, you know, her coming back to kill people that do think of her. It's not really revealed why she's able to come back and only kill people that uh, think of her. I mean, it's, it's revealed there's kind of like a, an acolyte who is, like, very much like the cult of Daphne. But, like, no, it's just, you know, inexplicable ghosts hunting people that think about her. But anyways, town trauma covering up the thought of Daphne, but this is the same town that won't shut up about the serial killer they had that was cutting off people's lips. I feel like if you're going to have trauma, that serial killer is probably the trauma you cover up. Not Daphne, but whatever. It's just kind of it's kind of silly. And I, I know it's kind of a nitpick, but it, it just seems it seems silly. And like I said, my main, my main criticism is that Daphne at every turn, is undermined by Josh Mallerman's descriptions of her. Uh, I mean, she has, like, comedic timing in terms of, like, showing up in a chair and slowly swiveling around when somebody, you know, notices that somebody's in a chair. Like, what are you doing, Daphne? What are you doing? Anyways, uh, there is a small press edition of Daphne coming out soon. I don't know who it's by. SST Publications over in the UK are probably going to do an edition because they are on a big Mallerman kick. But there is supposedly a US special edition coming out soon. It hasn't been announced yet. All I know is it's not by Earthling Publications because Paul Miller from Earthling said somebody beat him to it. So it could be Lavidian. It could be, uh, oh man, who, Dark Regions. They did uh, Bird Box and Mallory. Could be Cemetery Dance. They did on this The Day of the Pig. Who knows? Could be anybody. Could be Thunderstorm. Could be Josh Mallerman's first foyer into Thunderstorm books. Anyways, there is a uh, signed limited edition coming out that's not just a signed trade edition. Honestly, I was kind of underwhelmed by this. I'm going to probably pass on that, but that's just because the book book budget is pretty tight. But, I mean, if you're a Mallermaniac, I consider myself a Mallermaniac, you should definitely check it out. I mean, you, it, check out all Josh, Josh Mallerman's... Josh! All of Josh Mallerman's titles. But anyways... Uh, yeah, here's my, my video review for this. Uh, if, like I said, if you're looking for more of like a young adult horror novel, this is probably for you. If you're looking for a more classic Josh Mallerman, this might not be it. I feel bad saying so, but that's just the, the truth of the matter. 
Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.